78 Sports TV here. Salute to the mighty LDBC, Lions Den Boxing Community. For those who don't know, now you know. Smash the like button. Hit the subscribe. Also, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I drop a new video. If you're digging the video, go ahead and share this joint. All right, y'all. So this is a response to a lot of comments I've been getting. It's been fun listening to these Devin Haney haters in my chat trying to justify their hatred for this kid and uh, have their little double standards, you know what I mean? So one question I keep getting is, um, well, if, if, look, okay, fine. If Devin Haney wants to fight Regis, if he wants to fight Teofimo Lopez, if he wants to move up to 140, why don't he drop his belts at 135? First and foremost, uh, that is one of the most ridiculous statements ever. Especially, this is how you expose the Devin Haney haters. First of all, nobody asked Canelo Alvarez to – drop his belts because he's going to, to another weight class uh, uh, to conquer that one. Nobody asked uh, Jamel Charlo, well, since you're moving up to fight Canelo, uh, you're moving up two weight classes, well, you just drop them 154-pound belts because Tim Zhu down there waiting. That ain't fair to Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu been down there waiting for uh, to fight this man for all this time. Ain't nobody ain't nobody uh, asking uh, Charlo to, no, what, what Tim Zhu supposed to do? That's not fair to Tim Zhu. You ain't heard nobody say nothing like that, have you? But Devin Haney, mind you, Charlo ain't fought in like a year and a half. Canelo fight whenever he wants to. But Devin Haney just beat Lomachenko a little over a month ago, and everybody's trying to get these belts from this kid. The same fan base that are fans of people like Javante Tank Davis and, and Tank and his team brag that belts don't mean, don't matter. They've been bragging all this time that they don't need belts. Belts don't matter. Take a star. Take don't need no belt. Take it, man. Take it. Do anything. He can fight whoever he wants. People still gonna pay for it. That's what they told us. Ryan Garcia's of the world. Belts don't matter. Belts just collect dust. Real, the real stars don't need belts. Y'all been fan, fans of these guys who who talk like this and this type of duck rhetoric. Y'all been fans of these guys for years. And y'all was just laughing about this stuff. Devin Haney, who's on a mission for legacy and greatness, decides he's going to go and collect these belts. He's going to fight the people who the others don't want to fight. See? See, wasn't nobody knocking on the door to fight Tiafimo Lopez. Devin Haney was. Tiafimo Lopez openly ducked Devin Haney, and is still ducking Devin Haney. Uh, there's countless interviews on YouTube with Tiafimo Lopez bragging about ducking Devin Haney. Bragging! So you can't tell me T.O. wasn't ducking Devin when the man is bragging about ducking Devin on YouTube, bragging. You understand? So these other fighters wasn't lining up to fight Teofimo Lopez. It wasn't even lining up to fight George Cambosis, bro. It wasn't even lining up to fight Cambosis. Two people had Cambosis. Uh, uh, you had Devin Haney and... Uh, Vasil Lomachenko, the one to fight George Cambosis. You ain't heard nothing from Tank about fighting George Cambosis for Undisputed. You ain't heard nothing from Ryan Garcia about fighting George Cambosis for Undisputed. You know why? Because the belts don't matter. You know what I'm saying? That's what they say. The belts don't matter. You ain't hear nothing about Shakur Stevenson going to jump up and wait and, 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 and take on... Um, George Cambosis. No, you had Vasil Lomachenko and Devin the Dream Haney. All right? Devin beats George Cambosis twice in Australia. Then, not only did he beat George Cambosis, he takes on a guy who all of you dudes was hoping that he lose to. All of you dudes were saying he wasn't going to fight Loma. There were so many videos on YouTube and comments from people, you really think Devin Haney's going to fight Loma? You're crazy. <laughs> I'm laughing at these guys who really think Devin's going to fight Loma. Trust me, he's not. But then he fights Loma. And what they do? 
What these guys do? Run for the hills. They ain't rooting for, for, for Devin to lose against Loma. They so salty that he beat Loma that even in their post-fight uh, videos and uh, uh, they, they sad, got their heads down. <laughs> they just depressed. Oh, it was a robbery. I thought that I thought Loma won that fight. The root for him. See, that's the difference between see you we can throw terms out here like fanboys and uh, uh D riders and all we can say all that kind of stuff, but you know what the difference is between the people like myself who back Devin Haney and you guys that hate Devin Haney. The difference is when Shakur Stevenson and Geronte Davis are fighting anybody. I'm rooting for them to win. I'm predicting that they're going to win. I'm telling you how they're going to win. You see my excitement uh, uh, in the post-fight interviews. But when I listen to y'all dudes and see y'all comments and stuff, y'all not excited about Devin Haney because you're haters. It's, it's levels to this. Don't try to project. Uh, when y'all use terms like fanboys. Don't try to project that stuff on other people. It's y'all. Y'all haters. That's what it is haters now now you have the, the this sentiment that Devin Haney should get rid of his belts if he going up to 140 absolutely not the man just got the belts and they already trying to take them from him. politics of boxing WBO and the WBC already giving out deadlines and all this nonsense when the last time you heard them give Canelo a deadline for anything when the last time you heard him give Jamel Charlo a deadline? What about Jam- Jamal Charlo? When the last time WBC gave him a deadline? What about Tyson Fury, who finna fight uh, Julius Ndongo? Finna fight a UFC fighter for the WBC title. The sanction. That's what I want to know. They're trying to get them belts from uh, Devin Haney immediately and boxing fans see the hypocrisy but they're ignoring it because they dislike Devin Haney but if the same thing happened to their favorite fighter next year they'll be expecting everybody to to be sympathetic and everybody to be riding and oh man look what they do in the tank man you see what they trying to do the tank man man this is bogus man what they trying to do and that no ain't nobody trying to hear that one thing I know about this boxing and about this YouTube is that it goes in cycles Okay, so one moment you might be up and you brag and you're talking greasy and all that, but one minute you might be down. If everything comes around full circle, uh, I've seen it all happen, you know what I'm saying? So, like, a lot of y'all dudes need to be careful with the cap that y'all are putting out here. Okay, be careful because uh, you can easily look like a hypocrite because the stance you're taking today, you're gonna be trying to find a wiggle, some wiggle room like a politician. You're going to be trying to find some wiggle room to get out of that stance uh, uh, three months from now. See what I'm saying? You, you're going to be ice putting yourself in the corner, putting yourself in the box to where you got to ride with this standpoint or be called a hypocrite. So don't be overly emotional and say stuff that you don't mean just because you, you, you're a Devin Haney hater because you dislike this kid. You know what I'm saying? The young Devin Haney is doing everything that we ask uh, fighters to do. We ask them to pursue greatness. We ask them to sacrifice. We ask them to fight the best. And he's done that. He tried to fight Javante Tank Davis on several occasions. Right? And Javante Davis' team has shot that fight down several times. And we got a million excuses. First excuse was Devin Haney's on the wrong side of the street. Oh, if he really wanted to fight, why he leaves Showtime? Dude, y'all need to stop this set trip and stuff because Showtime don't give two pennies about none of you dudes, right? All this PBC top rank uh, versus the versus uh, the zone. Y'all need to get out of here with that, man. You dudes are so quick to try to – y'all always talk. Get out of here. Ridiculous fake game banging. Trying to attach yourself to something that don't nobody even, people don't even acknowledge you, don't even care about you. Or why he leaves Showtime if, if he wants to fight Tank. Do you talking about <laughs> man? First of all, Showtime when Devin Haney left Showtime was years ago, 
years ago. <laughs> and at that time, they had Al Hamid's blessings to leave because Showtime couldn't pay what pay Devin Haney what the zone was going to pay Devin Haney, right? Just like you saw several PBC fighters go over and get that guaranteed money and guaranteed fight dates from the zone because uh, PBC and Showtime didn't, didn't have the dates or the money. So what? Devin Haney has called out Javante Tank Davis so many times, tried to make the fight with Javante Tank Davis, uh, even to the point where when Devin Haney became undisputed, check this out. This is what the Tank Davis fans never want you to know, and they never you would never hear them uh, talk about this. They'll just act like it never happened. When Devin Haney became undisputed, okay, what he did was he contacted the WBA, and 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 because uh, you know Tank Davis is Devin Haney's mandatory for the WBA, and we all know that the WBA is forcing the regular champion to fight the uh, the the you, the uh, super champion. They're doing that in every division, except for you got it lightweight. Every other division, they're ordering. The, the super champion to face the regular champion, except for lightweight. So you got to ask yourself, why is that? i am tell you why. When Devin Haney became undisputed champion, first thing he did, first order of business, was he contacted the WBA and asked them to order him to fight his mandatory. Right Now, what, what champion is asking to fight his mandatory? Most of the time, they're looking for other fights. But it just so happened this time, the mandatory is a big fight. Javante Tank Davis. You know what the WBA told Devin Haney and his team? Well, we tried that, and um, they sent us back this email. Tank Davis' team sent us back this email and said that Tank Davis does not need belts. Tank Davis is a superstar. Tank Davis will not be dictated to and told what to do by the likes of you. If you try to force Tank Davis to fight anybody, we'll just simply drop your little raggedy belt. And the WBA, being the cowards that they are, allow Tank Davis' team to bully them, and they don't want to give up Tank Davis' sanctioning fees. See, they're getting sanctioning fees from Devin Haney and from Tank Davis. See, they don't want to give up that sanctioning fee. So they just slid back and say, hey, there's nothing we can do, Devin. We need to, we need to keep getting that, that paper. We need to keep getting that paper from Tank. Now, see, everything I just said is truth, but you'll never hear Tank fans talk about that because they can't justify it. They can't defend it, so they'll just ignore it. See? They'll just ignore it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but <clears throat> that's what it is, man. You know, Devin Haney did something that Shakur Stevenson and Javante Tank Davis never even attempted to do, and that's um, go out there and fight Marcel Lomachenko. And then beat him on top of that. You understand? So Devin Haney's already surpassed these guys uh, when it comes to accomplishments and legacy. He's already a Hall of Famer uh, uh, for becoming undisputed. Um, so now everything he does now is just icing on the cake um, towards greatness, towards his legacy in the future. And he, he cares about legacy. And we should we should support fighters that care about legacy. Not just the money fights. Money fights are good. Fighters need to make money, right? But sometimes everything falls in place to where your legacy fights are also your money fights. And that's what Devin Haney's looking for, right? So uh, right now, Devin is trying to fight Regis Pro Gray at 140 for the WBC 140-pound title, which is an extremely dangerous fight. Regis can knock, knock you out with one punch. This ain't no cakewalk, and dudes ain't even giving Devin credit for that. They're like, oh, man, why he ain't fighting Shakur? Why he don't just drain himself and fight Shakur again? The same dudes that, that was over here talking about how Devin Haney looked unhealthy and looked like a skeleton when he fought uh, Cambosis in the rematch. Oh, Devin, he looked horrible, man. Man, he, he, man, look at him, man. This ain't healthy. Then y'all trick him. Y'all beg him to fight Lomachenko. At 135, not not y'all. It was it was it was them poly dudes, them them, them them little racists. They wanted Devin to stay down at 135 and fight uh, uh, Lomachenko. He did that. He sacrificed again. And the man said after that, even though it's hard to make 135, 
even though I shouldn't go to 140, I'll still stick around at 135 for the right price. It got to make sense, meaning it got to be financially feasible for me to hurt myself. If I'm giving somebody else an advantage, if I'm giving somebody else an advantage over me um, by me draining myself, I, it got to be financially feasible for me. So he would do it for the right price. So he offered Shakur Stevenson 25%. I'm going to take 75, you take 25, right? And I'm going to take this dangerous fight. What should Shakur say? Oh, man, no, man. I'm up for the pitch in the WBC. I want 50 50. This is the same Shakur Stevenson that's on the record. That's on the record about eight weeks ago, probably about two months ago. Shakur Stevenson is on YouTube right now talking about licking his chops about fighting Devin Haney weight drain. Think I'm lying? The man said, well, Devin Haney, he got to fight Lomachenko. He should get past Lomachenko, but but it's hard for Devin to make 135. He's going to be drained if he try to fight me. Ooh-wee. He was smiling. Like, ooh, he's going to be drained if he try to fight me. Ooh-wee. So you need Devin Haney to be weight drained, and you need him to give you a 50-50 split. Bro, get out of here. You ain't trying to fight no Devin Haney. Shakur is foolish because if Shakur really wanted, if he really thought he could beat Devin, he should have jumped on that opportunity for 25%. Jumped on it. Because you're going to have the advantage. But he refused to take it. <laughs> he refused to take it. So um, we'll see what happens with Regis. We'll see because Regis don't really want to fight Devin Haney either. I know y'all don't want to hear that, but that's just true for the matter. Regis was talking real greasy about how he had beat Devin Haney. He had knocked Devin Haney out. Devin Haney got on the phone and called Daddy Hearn and said, hey, let's make the Regis fight. What Regis say? What's the first thing Regis said? Oh, man, I'm surprised he... He reached out to Eddie. That shocked me. He reached out to Eddie to make a fight with me. Fight still ain't signed. You know why? Regis talking about uh, he need more money. Uh, Eddie, you know, Eddie ain't paying enough for this mega fight. Uh, Devin Haney trying to fight him as soon as possible. Devin like, hey, let's let's do it in October. Regis like, oh, well, well, what about November? I'm gonna be out out of the country. I'm gonna be out of the country in October. Dude, what do you gotta do that's that important, Regis? What you got to do that's that important, bro, that you can't fight Devin Haney for uh, for, for an undisputed champion for the biggest payday of your career, you finna go out the country. How you going to fight him in November? What you? How long you going to be out the country? If you fight him in November, that means you're going to be in training camp in October, right? So how you going to be out the country? This dude is all over the place. What you going to do, train for four weeks for Devin Haney? Regis is capping, y'all. He nervous. <clears throat> now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you what keeps punchers up at night. Because, you know, fans, love. we all love punchers. We all do. Uh, I love punchers, too. But what keeps punchers up at night is slick boxers. Slick outboxers keep them up at night. Because historically, the slick outboxer beats the puncher. Historically. Sometimes the puncher can win. If everything lines up right. But, you know, it is what it is. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Uh, don't be hypocrites when it comes to Devin Haney and and, and and he need to give up his belts and this and that. You know what I mean? Don't nobody care about Shakur. Shakur just got here, bro. He just, Shakur has done absolutely nothing at 135. Nothing. To be up here begging, acting, acting so entitled. The man come up here and fight a dude named Yoish who nobody ever heard of. He beat this dude up, and now he pinching in the WBC for Devin Haney's belt. Now, what kind of haterism is this, bro? And y'all, y'all co-sign this haterism. Just like Isai Cruz just said about Shakur. Isai Cruz said that Shakur just got to 135 and is walking around here like somebody owed him something. Exactly. Put the work in, bro. Make, make Bob Aaron them give you the Lomachenko fight. 78 Sports TV, salute to the mighty LDBC. Y'all smash the like button. I'm about to hit old. Deuces.